Boost training number five. If you struggle with getting more revenue, it's not your fault. We all do. I certainly do. The key is what are you going to do about it? So what we want you to do today is really focus on a couple of key activities to increase your revenue. So my goal is to help you increase your revenue during this training by implementing three actions from the training. So I think there's sort of four key challenges that I see when people talk about not having enough revenue. The first one is getting so many conflicting opinions. There's so many people, marketing experts that I interview to get into the boost community to become suppliers. And every time I ask them, they have a slightly different angle. And also myself, I know that there's so many marketing people that have given me advice as to what I should do to improve my brand. And sometimes it's really confusing. One person will say one thing and then the next person will say the complete opposite. The next is that you lose confidence when you don't hit your numbers. So certainly if you're from corporate and you've always been really successful, you know, you've had great results and you ride on those. But in your own business, it can get really difficult when you're not hitting your numbers. And then unfortunately, you can get the third key challenge, which is you start to get desperate and clients can smell it. They can feel it and you start putting yourself before them. So you start talking about the features of your products. You start talking about you rather than really understanding whether they've got a particular pain point that you can solve and whether they're right to buy. And some of the stats that you'll see later on in the training really shows that it does take some time for people to make a decision. They're not going to make a yes on the first call, even though you want them to, because you're desperate to get revenue. And the last thing is that you run out of cash. So often what you'll do is have a new website, you'll get graphic designing, you'll, you'll basically invest all of these costs thinking that you're going to get the revenue. And the revenue normally doesn't come in the time that you want it. So therefore you run out of cash and you'll end up tipping money in from your own personal finances to plug the gap or you'll have to stop doing things, whether it's in your personal life or within your business when you know you need to do things. So that's when you have a website that you're not happy with or you have other things that you're compromising on because you're running out of cash. So, you know, what are some of the challenges that you've got around revenue? So most of you are watching this on a replay. So what I want you to do is just pause it and just in boost, go in after this and just write some of the key challenges that you're having around the revenue. But I know that, and you know, the four that I've mentioned are sort of the, the most common ones. And the other one is people, you know, sort of chasing shiny objects. So I think they get distracted and they get so desperate that I'm gonna, you know, I'll just try anything. And each time you try something different, it stops you. So what we wanna do today is give you some really great resources so you won't be out there wasting time chasing the wrong thing. So this is uh, the photo that I use often in the boost training, but you know, you feel absolutely exhausted. And I know I've had days where I just think, you know, look, it's just gonna be easier if I went back to corporate. I'm absolutely exhausted. You know, people have said no to you and you take it personally when someone rejects you and says, I don't want your service. But what you gotta realize, it's got nothing to do with you. It's not personal. It's just that you haven't packaged it in a way that helps or solves a problem for them and makes it very easy for them to realize that. But there are no silver bullets. And what I'm gonna do is present my top tips and you can apply what works for you because every business is slightly different. So you need to work out the best tips for your business. I will show you three key ways to increase revenue so you can go back to living and giving. So these are the three key ways and you've probably heard me talk about them. I won't go into detail on this slide, but I'm gonna break down actual practical tips under each of them. But free is one, paid is the second, and joint venture is the third. So let's start with free. So the first one is LinkedIn outreach. And outreach is where you're going out and actually asking people to connect with you. That's what I mean by LinkedIn outreach. So there's 500 million LinkedIn users in the world. 250 are active every month with 40% using it daily. 
So it's becoming a very, very active platform. And Microsoft are doing some changes to LinkedIn to improve that. And I think some of the changes with Facebook and what they did in February about turning around a lot of the, the social, uh, or sorry, the business information within feeds has really changed the game. I was amazed actually last night, I saw a Facebook ad that had you know them saying, this is what we're about. We're about social engagements, etc. So I think all the business uh, conversations, the B2B will happen more on LinkedIn. So I expect this to go even more. And 59% of LinkedIn members have never worked at a company more than 200 employees. So there's a lot of B2B business owners out there. So most of us are service-based businesses. So it's a brilliant opportunity to work and find the right clients through LinkedIn. So there's sort of three key ways you can do it. The first is uh, do it yourself. So um, the, the first thing is get Sales Navigator, it can be a little expensive, it is $99 a month, but I just can't find any other platform out there that gives you the quality of filters to actually find your ideal client. We all know that you know in our five rapid growth drivers, ideal client is number two, it's critical, and what you can do is get very specific. So we've got our filters set up where it's you know people that have been in corporate, now in a business that one to 10 employees, have been working there for more than two years, are located in these ge geographic locations around the world, and we can get very targeted. And what I did was I got my VA to basically go through, create those filters in Sales Navigator, work out exactly uh, who we should be targeting, and then I went through and reviewed that list. So I'd approve that list every three days. And then, and we set a goal of 80%, so once she got to 80% of yeses, i.e. I looked at a profile and said, yep, that's perfect. Once we got over that 80%, then I just said, you do it. I, you don't need to get me involved. But my VA is, is spending about four to five hours a day at the moment on this. So it's a big investment in time, but it's really starting to pay off. And I'll show you some of the results in a moment. And uh, we do weekly reporting. So I think it's really important to measure. So test this to see if it works. You've got to give it a little bit of time, but you've got to make sure you've got the right, the right weekly report set up. And also uh, the outreach where someone, so you've got the outreaches where you're going out and asking someone to connect with you. But the other thing is that um, when someone's viewed your profile or there's a new connection request, actually reach out to them. And the bit at the top around conversational scripts, I think it's so important. We've tried the scripts and you've probably got them where it's obvious that it's been written by a LinkedIn expert. It's not very human. And ultimately we're in a people to people business and you've got to make sure that it's conversational. What you would love to receive is pretty much what other people would love to receive. So, you know, certainly make it conversational and hot potato. So, you know, always ask short questions and always end in a question that's getting engagement back on people. Now, how often do you get one where it's, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so, it starts okay at the top and then it's just a, a, you know, a barrage of this is what we do, this is the sort of businesses we work for. And I'll say, you know, we work with, you know, the biggest companies in the world. I'm like, well, we're not, we're, we're a small community that's rapidly growing, but we're not a big enterprise client. You've just completely blasted me and it, it's, it's not of value. So um, you know, we also look at someone's profile and make sure that we can get something personal. So whether it's a connection or it's a cause or it's something that relates, we can actually have that within the conversation script. So here's a little example of the tracker. So we've got um, by month, and LinkedIn is saying about 40%. So out of every request you send out, about 40% is, is a good result. So you can see for us, when we had uh, scripts that weren't so great, they were a bit lower. And now with the right scripts, we've been able to uh, increase it. In May, we had a fantastic month with 80% uh, of acceptances. And then the most important thing after that is then how many have booked a call and, you know, um, how many people actually turned up to calls. Now for me, a lot of this I'm doing is actually to find the right suppliers to send to, uh, to put in our community for you as a Boost member. So that's uh, a lot of my outreaches around that. 
And then the rest of it is around trying to find the right client so that once again, we build the membership by having the right people in it. So the next uh, one is done with you. So um, I've uh, been able to find a fantastic LinkedIn person and uh, she really helped me with my LinkedIn profile. So uh, this was a, instead of reaching out to people, this was actually a post, this is Nathan Chan, and I was getting around 200, uh, 200 people viewing my posts on average on my uh, podcast each week, and I was getting very little likes and engagement, or likes and comments. And the algorithm is that, you know, the more that people, it's, I think it's a two hour window at the start, and the more that people like and engage, it's a longer it will stay in the feed. And also, if you don't have a link out, so the key thing that she taught me is to, you go and post it, and then you go back and edit and put the link out afterwards. So, uh, you know, those little tips made a massive difference. So this was in the first sort of 12 hours, there's two and a half thousand, I think it's over three and a half to, to 4,000 views now. And uh, I've got some really good engagements and comments out of it. So what we're going to do is set up a fortnightly group where she's going to give a discount rate for Boost members where you can actually get direct coaching by her and we can all help each other do social selling. And social selling is you know, having the right post content. I've been doing a lot of video on LinkedIn and also a lot of posts. She's got some brilliant research. She's in one of the top 25 LinkedIn experts in the world and she can help with this. So if you're interested in that and you'd like to be involved, just go uh, email me at paul at buildlivegive.com and I'll make sure I'll add you to the list. We've already got about four or five uh, Boost members already in and uh, I know it's going to fill pretty quick. So um, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity and certainly do it. And then there's the done for you service where you're paying someone to do it. So you can go on our suppliers list, you can just go by LinkedIn, you can go preferred, not preferred, you can go by different value, high, medium, low, and you can basically find someone to help you. And if you're not quite sure, once you know you look at it and of if you click on it, it will have some additional information to help you make a decision by yourself. But if you're not sure, then just reach out to me via the direct coaching and I'll be able to guide you. So uh, the key action out of this is uh, pick one of the three methods. But LinkedIn is working really well for, for people that are selling a high, fairly high ticket item and it's a service-based uh, model. So, you know, that's most of us in Boost. So it works really well. The next is around podcast outreach. And there's uh, 525 known shows in the world. And this stat really floored me that 44% of US people listen to a podcast, 17 weekly, 15 in the last year. And to me, this is all about having conversations. So, you know, for me, we've had nearly 10,000 downloads of our podcast, and that's just 10,000 conversations I'd never be part of. The other stat is that about 80% of a podcast people will listen to. So they nearly listen to the whole lot. So it's amazing. And, you know, I'll have people from a couple of years ago say, yes, I heard you on this podcast, or I listened to your podcast, and, and they know you, etc. And that content is evergreen. So that, you know, it's, it's constantly out there helping position you as an expert and helping people to get to know you better. Because, you know, there is so much noise and distrust out there, and a podcast can really help. So um, what it also does is help you get your story straight. There's nothing better than being interviewed by someone, and you've got to really talk about your business. It really helps you solidify what you do. So I think podcasts is brilliant, and I think it's one of the best ways to get free marketing in the world today. So um, what, what you've got to do is, you know, you've identified your ideal client, you've got to see where they're listening or um, find out where they're listening and also see where it's complementary. So there'll be, you know, maybe you're selling a particular service and there's a big community that doesn't uh, compete, you could add value. So for example, you know, web development into the BLG community, most people want web. Therefore, it's very complimentary. So if you get on our podcast, you've got a great chance of getting you known within that community. So there's a couple of ways you can find what the best podcasts are. So one is uh, listen notes. 
So in here it's got uh, you know 520 episodes, uh, 32 million uh, episodes, uh, sorry podcasts and episodes. So that's a great place and you can sort of search and rank and find the ones that you should go on. And then you can also go into Stitcher or this is uh, iTunes and you can just go in by category, whether it's business and you can see the top ranking podcast in there and then you can go and approach them. And what I've done is created some great outreach templates. So some really good templates that make it easy for you to get on because so many people try to get onto these shows and it's very difficult. So if you use the right wording, that can make a massive difference. So I've been able to, to uh, get lots of people onto really big podcasts around the world by using a particular template and uh, happy to give that to you. So if you just go to that link, pause, go to that link, you can get that uh, outreach template. So the key action here is start picking the show to be on and also send me a list of the shows that you want to be on because I can get you into some of them. I've you know, got a, a fantastic reputation and also a really good network with people in our genre around the world who are podcasting. So I'll do everything I can to help you get on the show. So the next one is uh, around quizzes. So uh, quizzes, uh, if you go on a website and there's a quiz, you know, they're very um, e um, engaging and entertaining. So the old checklist and PDF is getting a bit passe these days. These are fantastic. People spend time on site, which Google love. You can also opt, um, the opt-in at the end, the rates are a lot higher at 50%. Uh, it helps by linking it to your marketing automation tool. So you can do a lot of follow-up based on you know, how many um, answers they finished, etc. And it's also very mobile responsive, which you know, more and more people are doing everything on their mobile phones. So uh, these quizzes are fantastic. So there's a couple of platforms within uh, Boost that you can go into under suppliers. And uh, this one here, I'd love you to go and have a look. So it's called Coco.Agency. Go on, where it's going to start your instant audit. Go through, it's bot generated, and this is fantastic. It's on the platform landbot.io. We're actually testing it ourselves, and we hope to have something out next week, but you'll be able to test it on our website as well. But I think it's a really cool way of engaging, and it's uh, much better than uh, you know your, your boring PDF or checklist. So the action here is just research quizzes for your business. In particular, look at that Coco.agency. So the next is around referrals. So this is a survey, you know, 7,500 small businesses and 85% of their sales come from word of mouth. And you can see the percent on the others, but by far word of mouth is still the most important way to get new business and uh, in increase your revenue. And I, I think there's sort of three key things here. So one is around the timing. Um, people so often wait to the end of an engagement to ask for a referral, you should ask soon as the client signs up, right? So that's a great time, they're, they're euphoric, it actually helps endorse that they made the right decision, they refer you to somebody else, perfect time to ask. So certainly do that at the start of the process, not the end. Make sure that you're asking your partners and also your list for referrals. And, and most people, you know, just don't wanna do this, it's just, I, I say, Yes, it's the number one way of generating sales, but most people just don't do it. So just have simple techniques on how to do it. So this was something that I sent out, um, and most of you would have got this, which was just an offer out to the list to basically ask them to refer people to me. So it's a great offer, it's really simple, didn't take me that long to craft it, and I sent it out to my list, but it's just a matter of doing it. And to be honest, you've got to have it done on a regular basis. And it's, it's uh, you know, that simple. Uh, so the key thing here is craft, craft or create a referral system today and just start referring. And the other thing is just every time you talk to someone and if it's not right, you know, you'll have a sales conversation and it's not right, they're not ready to buy now, that's okay. But ask them if they know somebody who is, all right? It just takes one more minute on the phone, but make sure you're doing that or on the video conference or wherever you do it.